Enough about game elements, let's talk about a player's turn. For reference, we have included two sets of quick reference cards that can walk you through the player's turn. Each turn has five phases, so let's start from the top. Phase 1, the Equip Phase. In this phase, you can equip or unequip any number of item cards to and from your inventory. This is the only phase when you can equip cards. Phase 2, the Action Phase. In the Action Phase, you can play abilities on cards in your inventory, perform character abilities, answer a decision riddle, or trade one item card from your equipped items or inventory. You can do this once per turn. Phase 3, the Quest Phase. There are three options before you in the quest phase. The first is you can complete a quest. The second thing you can choose to do during your quest phase is cycling a quest card. If for whatever reason you don't like the options you have in the active quests, you can take one of those quest cards and put it on the bottom of its respective quest stack and draw a new quest from any unlocked quest stack to replace it. You can do this once and still complete a quest. You can do it a second time, but if you do, you forfeit the ability to complete a quest. By the way, this is why you don't want people to know which puzzle items you have. If they knew, they'd probably just keep cycling your quest out, making it much more difficult to get them. Phase 4, the Resolve Phase. The Resolve Phase works just like the Action Phase. You can play abilities on cards, perform character abilities, answer a decision riddle, or trade one card from your equipped items or inventory. Phase 5, the End Phase. During the End Phase, you'll replace any missing quests from open quest spots. You can choose a quest from any unlocked quest stack. Once you get through one or two turns, you'll pick up on how the turns play out, and you'll be cruising right through them. Let's talk about a few more lingering elements before we get to how the final quest plays out. When looking at the quest cards, the cost of completing that quest is on the bottom left section of the card. You will see a trait number, a magic icon, and or some other set of instructions. If your character already meets or exceeds the trait cost in that box, you can just take it for its experience points and rewards, which is located on the bottom right box of the card. Place it in your completed quest spot on your player mat, and it will add to your final XP points. If, however, you do not automatically meet the trait cost, you can still attempt the quest by first putting your character token on that quest card, signaling to the other players you are attempting to complete that quest. And then you get to roll two black dice. Whatever result you roll, you can allocate those points in any way you want amongst your base traits. So if you roll a four, you can divvy those points however you like amongst your base traits. Some quests may require multiple base trait costs, or even items. If a quest cost requires a trait roll and an item, should you fail, you do not lose that item. If you fail the quest, there is a symbol in the middle of the bottom box that has a torch or a skull. If it has a skull, you gain a death card to put on your player mat. What is a death card? Shadowgate is known for its many and creative deaths. In the game, death does not stop you from continuing in the video game nor does it here. It merely gives you a minus five to your total XP points at the end of the game. So you may find yourself getting a few of these cards, but fear not, you won't be eliminated. If the symbol in the bottom box is a torch, the torch moves down one. At the end of each round, the last player moves the torch down one at the end of their turn regardless, but failing these types of quests moves it down faster. If the torch counter gets to a red number, one of the players will roll a red die and whatever trait comes up, take a plus one token of that type and flip it to the back side where there's a minus one of that trait and put it on the red space under the torch track. Until the torch moves down or out of the red numbers entirely, all players lose minus one to that base trait. If it progresses to another red number, a player will roll the red die again and the token will swap out to a minus one of that trait instead. They do not stack. If the torch manages to reach the skull, it has gone out and all the players receive a death card and the token moves to the orange five on the torch track. Fear not, there are torch item cards that can keep the torch alive, so use them to your advantage. Quest bonus. So, how do you become the High Lord of the Westland again? That's right, you have to have the most XP points at the end of the game. Well, we've built into the game a way to get bonus XP when completing a standard quest. You'll notice on the black bordered quest cards, there is a symbol just below the XP marker. If you have an item that shares that symbol in either your equipped items or inventory, you can, at the time of completing the quest, put a card of that type into your completed quest spot with the quest for its additional XP value. 